Hello and welcome to episode 8 of How to Code Games in BBC Basic. In this video we're going to be looking at the main program. Okay, so we're going to take a look at lines 450 to lines 550 today in this video and they represent the whole of the program. Now that might sound a little bit mysterious at first because clearly there's a lot more code going on beyond uh, line 550, but we can tell that it is actually the end of the program quite simply because we can see the word end here at line 550. Now, what that means in practice is that everything that the program itself is going to run is contained basically from lines 550 back. Anything below that is just a definition of either a procedure or a function, so a def proc or a def fn if it's a function. So all of those definitions are not actually part of the program as such, because it, the program is the bit of code that calls the procedures in particular order. And obviously those procedures themselves can call other procedures, um, that's, that's called nesting, uh, and plenty of these procedures do precisely that. But as an overall control flow for the program, it's really just 450 to 550, because anything after the end statement is just a definition of other things. Now, obviously, that's doing a big disservice to the procs, because actually the procs are doing the heavy lifting in Cosmic Invaders. If you didn't have them, um, this program really wouldn't do very much at all. But it's important to understand that what we call the so-called program is really the, these lines here. They are the control flow of the overall program. And as is quite common with arcade games and indeed 8-bit games in general, and in fact it's fairly true of some modern games as well, um, they're essentially held within a loop. Now in this case we can see it's a repeat until loop, which is uh, one of the loop types available in BBC Basic. Now a repeat until loop will essentially run the code within it indefinitely until this condition at the bottom here is satisfied. And if it isn't satisfied, the loop will just continue to go round and round and round, and it could go round indefinitely. If I was to leave my BBM emulator running for days and days and days and, and not, not press anything on the keyboard, the loop would just keep on running. So what is this actually doing in practice? Well, we can see here that it's a repeat until, and then there's something mysterious going on here. We haven't seen this variable before, but more on that later. But for now, we'll just say that this loop will continue until such time as a user presses either the uppercase or lowercase q. Now, if we look in sequence within the loop, what we can see is, first of all, it sets a variable called finish to a value of false. So every time the loop comes around, it will set that finish value to false. And that's important for reasons that we'll probably look at in, in future videos. But that variable is very important, and it's significant that it gets set to false at the start of every iteration of the loop. The next thing it does is it calls proc title, and having called proc title, it then calls something called proc time key. Now, without going into the details of proc time key just yet, let's imagine for a moment that all that proc time key is really doing is pausing, because a computer, even a computer as as uh, as old as the BBC Micro is. Um, it, it processes things very, very fast. If you were to simply ask it to run these these three procedures here, proc title, proc scores, and proc high scores in sequence, you would find that the screen would just be a blur of constantly changing text. And the reason for that is because it doesn't take the computer very long at all to run any of those procedures, and having run them, it'll just move on to the next one. So what you need in between is this proc time key, which actually introduces an artificial delay. So it effectively tells the computer to wait for a few seconds before then going on and executing the next procedure. So we can see the loop in action, first of all, if I come back into my BBEM so that it recognizes the cursors in there and, and it's now is now working. The first screen is proc title. What we are now seeing here is the result of proc scores. And if we wait for a few more seconds, we will see the results of proc high scores. And that's actually, if you think about it, that's all the loop is actually doing here. It's running each of those three procedures in sequence. And after it's run one of them, it pauses. And then it goes back to the beginning of the loop, as you can see here, runs proc title again. And it will leave proc title or the results of proc title on the screen for a few seconds as a result of proc time key before moving on to proc scores. And then again, pauses and will proceed on to proc high scores. And as I say, this will just keep on going um, until 
or such time as the loop end condition is satisfied. So that's that's all that's happening here. Um, if I were to satisfy the loop condition, just to prove a point, I could press come in here and press Q, and the program ends. As you can see here at line 550, and the loop is over because I've pressed Q as a result of the until condition here. Then all that happens is CLS, which clears the screen, and end. And end means that's it, no more program. Strictly speaking, the program is still there. If I was to press list, you could see that the program has not actually been cleared from memory. So um, although although the program has ended, we haven't uh, we haven't in, done any kind of reset. The, the break key hasn't been pressed. So the memory still preserves the program. And that means that I can just run again. And obviously, the program will come back. So that's what the repeat loop here is really doing. Um, but obviously within that, as you can see, we have these three distinct procedures and above all, we have this proc time key. Now, the fact that it's called proc time key and the fact that I've been referring to it as a means of being able to pause the computer, what we'll see if we go into proc time key is that it's doing something slightly more than that. So I'm going to go to proc time key and we can see the definition for it here, line 3120. Uh, it's a fairly short procedure, but it does something very important. First of all, it sets time equal to zero. Um, and that's a way of essentially setting an internal variable within uh, within the BBC to tell it, right, whatever you think time is at this point, I want you to just treat it as zero. So it's like having an internal counter or a stopwatch and just saying, set it back to zero. Now, as soon as you set it to zero, the, the BBC will continue to count again. So it, it, it's not like a true stopwatch. It's like resetting a stopwatch and then and then pressing start straight away. So although we've set it to zero, the, the moment that you do that, it will start counting. And I'm going to jump ahead to the end of the procedure, just so you can see that one of the conditions that could end the loop, which we'll look at in a second within this procedure, is time equals a thousand. So what that roughly represents, and it, it is a fairly inexact science, but what it roughly represents is a thousand cycles of the basic interpreter, uh, which is what is reading the code in effect, in effect. So if you think about it in terms of, it's not it's not, it's not a thousand seconds, clearly, it's a lot faster than that, uh, as you can tell from the loop when we had it up on the screen. But roughly speaking, it's taking a thousand cycles of, of, um, of code executions or CPU cycles are sometimes referred to. And once it reaches that point, um, the procedure will end because you can see here it's part of the until statement. So that's how it's creating the pause effect that we saw on the screen just now. But you can see it's doing more than that because having set time to zero, so having reset the, uh, the stopwatch, it then goes into this repeat loop here. And what that's doing is it's invoking this rather lovely function uh, called in key string or in key dollar, if you like. And what that does is it checks for user input. So what you say is you define a variable, this one here called a string, which we saw up above in, in the, uh, the main body of the program. And it says, right, I want to set the value of a string to basically whatever the user presses on the keyboard. That's all that that's doing here. It's just saying this variable equals whatever key the user presses, right? And the moment that it does that, the next thing that a user presses will be the value of a string. So essentially, because obviously all of this executes very quickly, the moment that the game title sequence comes up, um, if I was to press S, either lowercase or uppercase, it'll turn the sound on using the FX command, which we've seen before. Uh, or if I press O in either lowercase or uppercase, then it will set the sound to off, which is what the FX2101 indicates. So this loop goes around and around and around. And now every time it iterates, it checks, obviously, what the user has pressed. And the reason it's able to do that is because every time this cycles through, it resets the value of a string. So if, for example, I was to press a key other than S, O, or Q, or space, as you can see, which are the only things that have got conditions associated with them, if I press anything other than that, so if I press C, or if I press Z, or um, an exclamation mark, whatever it is, um, it will be ignored because because actually there's there's nothing here to handle that. But because this cycles around so quickly, I can press any number of keys in sequence and it will appear as if the moment I press one of these significant keys, it is action straight away. You won't be aware of the delay, but actually in principle, what's happened is when I press a key that isn't one of these, I have to 
wait until the loop comes around again for it to check what I've pressed next. But as I said, all of this happens so quickly that from a human being's point of view, you wouldn't notice. So proc time key is a slightly deceptive procedure because it isn't just doing uh, a loop in terms of pausing, it's also checking what key you've pressed. And that's probably why uh, the programmer here, Mark, has chosen to call it time key. It's not just doing a pause, which is indicated by the time, but it's also checking what key you've pressed. And that key that you press sets the value of a string. So you can see that the loop of time key can be broken either by the timer reaching a thousand, which takes only a few seconds, or the user pressing uh, either a Q or a space bar, which you'll remember from our um, Cosmic Invaders instruction screen, Q will obviously quit the game and space will start playing. So I don't actually have to press space or Q on this main title screen. I could press it at any point throughout this, this uh, master loop and it will take me into the game. So I press space from this screen. It starts up straight away. Um, and that's really, you know, how how the how the loop is powering the overall program, and that's 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 an important thing to uh, to bear in mind. So, and I've just pressed the escape key just to come out of the game, obviously, because that's another thing that is checked for elsewhere in the code, I should add. Um, so that's what proc time key is all about, and we're going to just jump back again. So you can see now that what's actually happening is we're not just calling proc, type, proc title and then waiting and then proc scores and waiting and then proc high scores and waiting. We're doing something more than that. We're actually giving the ability of the computer to know which key the user has pressed. And the main program itself has actually got the logic to say what to do with that. So proc time key, if we just jump back again, Although it does manage the S and the O for turning sound on and off, it doesn't do anything with the Q or the space bar. All that that will do is end the loop of proc time key. And at whatever stage in this main program we've reached, you'll notice that proc time key is always followed by an if statement to check whether the user has pressed space or Q. You can see it underneath each of these. So here we are. If we imagine that proc time key was midway through, as it was just now in the when I was in Cosmic Invaders, if I press space bar, proc time key as a loop will end, and then immediately it'll jump to line 470, and it will check what did I press. And here, it, in that case, I'd press space, so it knows to go to line 510. And at line 510, it says, well, if that's the case, we'll we'll basically call proc play. Now you can see that it's checking to see if I press space a second time here. There is a reason for that. It's a slightly unusual um, way of coding the main program. You might think that actually it would be just as easy to say up here, if I've pressed space, then call proc play. The only reason that the program has been written in this slightly unorthodox way and of jumping to line 510 and, and then calling proc play is because it needs to ensure that when proc play has finished, the first thing that the user sees, because when proc play finishes, it means that the game is over. The first thing that the user sees is proc high scores. If we had if um, a string equals space and then just called proc play, obviously remember that whenever a procedure finishes, it will return to the place from which it was called. And in this case, it would return to line 470. And then obviously it would go down to the next line in sequence, which is just checking to see if you've pressed Q, which you haven't. And then it'll go to proc scores. And proc scores is an unusual screen to present the uh, the game player with, because if you've just finished the game, what you actually want to see is the high score table. You don't want to see how many points do I get if I shoot a cosmic invader. So that's really the only reason that they've invoked the go to logic here. Go to statements are fairly unpopular with more advanced programmers because they they make the code quite difficult to follow. Even in this simple example, it's slightly perplexing as to why we've got a go to here in the first place. But you will find them in quite a few type in listings. They're a bit of a shortcut. Um, and although, as I say, more, more advanced programmers are not particularly keen on go-tos, uh, it's important to understand what they do. And there is a certain logic for why this one is here. So that's really concluded our look at this initial repeat loop. We've had also a look at the proc time key to understand how these three um, procedures are being called in sequence. 
Uh, what we'll do in the next video, as promised, I think in, in the last video, is we'll actually have a look at the overall design of the game itself. Uh, and to do that, what I'll be using is um, a nice flow diagram, which I just give a quick sneak peek to here. You can actually see um, some of what we've been looking at here. You can see the logic of what's going on at the beginning of the program here, but represented in a flow diagram, which can be sometimes a little bit of an easier way of understanding what the code is doing. Now, I've had to reverse engineer this from the type in listing um, which I've just basically done by hand but if you were setting about writing a game in BBC basic from scratch this is probably something that you would create yourself before starting to write the actual code of the game because as you can see it breaks it out into nice simple logical steps and that helps you understand which procedures you're going to need so we'll just have a quick sneak peek sneak peek here you can see that after proc initialize, we go straight to proc title, which is the first of the procedures in the list here. So that's the first one within the repeat loop. Um, but you can see that it, the first thing it does is then go to proc time key and proc time key checks whether or not the user has pressed spacebar. And if they have, it goes straight into proc play. If they haven't, it checks whether or not they've pressed the queue. If they have, it'll end the program. But if not, it'll then just cycle over to proc scores and then proc scores to proc time key. And the same sequence of logic, have they pressed space, yes or no? Have they pressed Q, yes or no? And assuming that it's no to both, cycles on to proc high scores, which in turn calls proc time key. And again, the same questions. Whereas at this point, if they haven't pressed space or Q, it loops all the way back to proc title and the loop continues. So you can see the master loop here of the program is represented by this segment of the flow diagram. And it's only at the stage at which a user presses yes, to any of these stages and they can press yes at any point within the loop and it will take them to proc play and it's proc play where the excitement really begins but we're not going to look at that today uh, we've had uh, a fairly decent run through in this video just examining the logic of the initial main program of the game which is the thing that you need to design up front and in the next video we're as well as having a look at what proc title and proc scores and proc high scores are actually doing we'll then get into the meat of the game and understand how proc play is actually working so I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope it's been informative. Um, fairly long video this one, but I thought it was important to emphasize how the main program of uh, an 8-bit arcade game in BBC Basic tends to be structured. Um, we've had a look at repeat loops and we've had a look at how you can cause the computer to artificially pause to enable the user to actually under, uh, see what's going on on the screen. Um, and we've had a look at how to capture user input as well as a variable and what to do with it. So as I say, hopefully that was informative for you. And in the next video, we're going to get stuck into the meat of the program within some of the main procedures. Until then, goodbye.